everybody. My name is Amar Ekter. So I run the product management team for SASE and SASE Security uh, here at VMware. So today I'm going to be talking about something we're all super excited about here at VMware, which is the VMware SD-WAN client. So this has been something that uh, we've wanted to do for many years. We've got lots of uh, partners and customers talking about the ability to have a software agent that sits on your laptop, on your mobile device, and bring the best of the capabilities that uh, people are familiar with with VMware SD WAN. Now, we're um, just in terms of background, where this is all coming from is that we live in a world where uh, people are moving their applications outside of the data center into the into the multi-cloud environments so that could be Azure, it could be AWS, uh, it could be any number of uh, IaaS environments, but also uh, the amount of remote work that is going on has accelerated uh, during COVID and continues to be uh, quite a bit of, um, of the facts of life. And what this does is it really changes your traditional sort of networking environment, the one that you used to have, you know, your core application sitting within the data center, and you used to worry about, hey, let me put a VPN concentrator in the front for the remote access people, have them being able to come in. And uh, that same, these same sets of trends that you see on the screen are really what are behind not just SASE, but just basics of SD-WAN and of itself, and specifically the technology that we have at VMware with VMware SD-WAN and our cloud-hosted gateways that allows you accelerated access into SaaS applications and multi-cloud environments. Now, you'll see these same capabilities, um, you know, talking back to these trends in the SD-WAN client in, in of itself, and that's actually the reason why we're calling it the SD-WAN client. Now, when you think about uh, application delivery, you need to have access into multiple clouds. Uh, you need to be able to use it with the different clouds and to be able to use traffic through the clouds in and of themselves. And that's how we've architected our SD-WAN offering, being able to connect to the clouds, being able to uh, drive traffic through the clouds if that's what people want to be able to do. Um, I think uh, Scott already walked through uh, some of the ideas about SASE, but inside of the sort of product offerings, these are it, available as independent offers. Of course, VMware SASE offering includes SD-WAN. It includes VMware Secure Access, which is a remote access offering based on zero trust capabilities. It includes Cloud Web Security, which has a SWIG, CASB, and DLP type capabilities. And it includes uh, VMware Edge Network Intelligence, which includes uh, AI ops and, and the acceleration of troubleshooting. Now, all of these technologies, um, they're either to drive traffic uh, from the users sitting on the left-hand side, whether they be sitting at home, whether they be you know, on the go, to where the resources are on the right-hand side, whether that be your private data center, your IaaS environment, or your cloud environments or the internet. Now, uh, that could be done through SD-WAN, it could be secured through cloud web security, the network uh, access could also be provided by secure access, which again is a remote access offering. Now, um, there's a couple of different other things that we do from a security perspective. For example, uh, we have the branch router and we do have a firewall that's built into the, uh, into the branch router. And uh, we will be adding additional uh, capabilities into that branch router for advanced threat protection and things of that nature. And, and this is going back to Scott's points about third-party integration. So we do integrate with third parties very deeply, for example, with Zscaler. And, and Palo Alto and Symantec and the like. But of course, we've got our single vendor SASE offering, but not just you know, integration in the cloud, but we also uh, have the ability to host virtual firewalls on our branch routers themselves. So it's not uncommon to have a VMware customer that's hosting a Palo Alto virtual firewall. Again, not single you know, management and certainly not single vendor, but you get the best of those kinds of capabilities if that's what you're looking for as a customer. Now. Uh, where does remote access fit in all of this is that uh, especially coming out of COVID, there is a lot of demand for people being able to work not just from home, but on the go. And uh, that's really the environment that we're actually, uh, putting the SD-WAN client on because, uh, you know, network connectivity can be challenging. This is part of the reason why we have all these capabilities in, in, in VMware SD-WAN to be able to up-level the, the network performance to be able to improve the user experience, uh, these types of things. But also uh, one of the hallmarks of the SD-WAN client is actually to be able to provide consistent security. And you'll see parts of that as I talk about their, its form of multi of, of, uh, of micro segmentation and the like. Now, we're, uh, 
the new VMware SD-WAN client sits, it's one of the ways of driving traffic from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Now, um, the appliance model that we talked about, the hardware, it's applicable in the office, in the branch where you have lots of people sitting, but it also is applicable in a home environment. So if you have somebody that has uh, high demands out of the network, they're sensitive to network performance. We've got cases with radiologists that are pulling down multi gigs of data uh, within a minute. They're sensitive to the network performance. It's part of getting their job done. So in that particular case, a hardware appliance at the home uplifting their network performance actually makes a lot of sense. Now for everybody else, it might be uh, better uh, or more cost efficient to be able to have an agent sitting, a software agent sitting on their laptop, on their mobile device and the like. And in that area, VMware actually has two options. We've got VMware Secure Access. So that is our zero trust capability integrated with technology from Workspace ONE, uh, provides uh, top of the line zero trust type capabilities, uh, if you're looking for something that integrates very well with Workspace ONE, device management, those types of things, uh, it can actually bring a client back into line from a risk perspective. If some, if they install Napster on there, if they install, if they start going to MySpace pages and the like, uh, we can actually, you know, implement policies. But if you have those types of things, then we can actually bring that device back into compliance because we're managing that device. Now, where the SD WAN client comes in, it actually brings the, the some of the tricks that exist today on VMware SD-WAN, forwarder, correction, being able to do path optimization. It brings those capabilities into a software form factor, but ultimately all three of these options, they're able to provide secure connectivity into your data center, into your IaaS environments, into your SaaS, and of course, to the general internet as well. Okay, now talking about a little bit of the architecture, what makes me excited about it is that um, it is uh, meant to be managed via our VCO, which is our orchestrator. That's our multi-tenant management system hosted by VMware, sometimes hosted by our partners. You would uh, configure the SD-WAN client from an administrator perspective from that, uh, from that environment. Now, it is an agent-based remote access offering, so you would install the agent onto your, uh, onto your laptop, onto your mobile device. And you have the ability of being able to install that agent on your server as well. So that, that server could be sitting inside your data center. It could be sitting inside of an AWS EC2 instance. And for some customers, that might be all that you need to do. Because this is unlike your traditional remote access VPN concentrator model, the client uh, install on both the user's uh, laptop as well as on the server actually join a fabric that is dynamically created between all the end systems that are participating in the SD-WAN client fabric. So this is one of the things that makes us similar to traditional SD-WAN in that uh, in SD-WAN, a branch router is able to talk to any other branch router directly. And that is also the case for uh, the uh, VMware SD-WAN client as well. Uh, one question that comes up over here is like, hey, what if my uh, my server is sitting behind a firewall or a NAT. Can my client uh, reach it? Those types of things. And the answer is actually yes. You don't have to coordinate with your security team, with your uh, firewall team, with your load balancer, load balancer team or any, any of that. Because what happens is the, the while the client will talk, try to talk directly to the server, um, uh, there may be a firewall that's blocking its path. So what happens in that case is that the server side as well as the client side is able to make outbound connections uh, to uh, a service that VMware operates. Uh, this is included as part of the SD-WAN client and this is called the client relay. And what the client relay does, it actually is able to bridge together for firewall and not traversal of these types of connections. This is exactly what's going on inside of Zoom. So if you're sitting, uh, you know, doing Zoom inside of, a, of an enterprise, uh, you don't, you know, you are doing an outbound connection to the cloud and that connection actually gets stitched across uh, multiple uh, uh, parties in that particular way. Now, uh, the traffic is still encrypted end to end from the client all the way to wherever the application is, where the server is. All the client relay is doing is just stitching, uh, is providing that connectivity uh, to be able to do firewall traversal. Uh, it is possible for a partner such as a, uh, uh, such as our tier one partners and, and, and those types of things, they're able to host uh, the relays on behalf 
uh, of, of the customer, and that provides greater granularity in terms of presence uh, of being able to do best path selection and those types of things. The other thing that happens is that the SD-WAN client is constantly learning. It's not just one relay that it's going to pick. It's constantly doing measurements and checking to see, well, is this the best relay that I can use at that point in time? And while this might be the best relay between client A and server A, for client A and server B, it may actually be a different relay, right? Or it might be better just to go direct. So the client fabric is providing this instrumentation about lowest latency, lowest jitter, best throughput, and the system is constantly self-organizing to be able to provide the best performance in that way. Now, what if you didn't want to install an agent onto your servers? Uh, you like this model of, hey, there's a box sitting in front of my data center in, inside my VPC, and I'd rather have things connect to it. We can do that. So that's what a client connector does. So a client connector um, is distributed as a Docker container, distributed as a, as, a, as a VM, and we will also incorporate that technology into our branch router. So if you don't want to deploy this as, you know, on a, inside your virtual environment, we also have the sort of physical appliance capability built into our branch routers themselves. Now, what happens here is the client connector functions exactly how the agent does. If it needs to, it will create an outbound connection. Otherwise, the client will connect directly to the client connector end-to-end -end encryption. And then from there, that traffic will go directly into, uh, uh, into the data center or your IaaS environment in that way. Unlike your traditional VPN concentrators, uh, what happens in your traditional VPN concentrator is that all of your traffic is going to go into that tunnel, and that tunnel is going to go to one VPN concentrator. And that guy might be sitting in Amsterdam, even though the server you're trying to get to is sitting in San Jose or Palo Alto or, or somewhere much closer to you. The SD-WAN client connector is fully participating in the SD-WAN client fabric. And what that means is that if you have multiple client connectors sitting in, in the multi-cloud, sitting within your data centers, the client will actually go to the one that's closest to the actual application that you're trying to get to. So a client may actually be connected to multiple client connectors, multiple servers with agents on them all at the same time, depending. And this is exactly how SD-WAN operates today. It's, you're not sending all your traffic to one site. You're actually being you're able to connect to multiple sites at the same time, all encrypted, all best path optimized and the like. Now, finally, we talked about any-to-any -any connectivity. So that's one network optimization, the self-organizing, self-optimizing, uh, path se selection is, is uh, network optimization number two. And the third one is that the SD-WAN client is also able to do uh, uh, packet loss recovery. So you're familiar with technologies like forward error correction, where if you lose a packet without having to retransmit that packet, uh, the system is able to recreate that packet. Now, this is most effective for voice traffic where, you know, that uh, it, it doesn't make sense to retransmit the traffic. Uh, it's just better to be able to recreate it without actually inducing that additional delay in of itself. So you have on the screen about the client relay, it's a service provider, customer hosted. So obviously customer hosted, if you have a bunch of connections, but when you don't have connections, you have to go to a service provider. Is that something that VMware is doing or is that a third party? Uh, so VMware does it. So VMware will host it inside of our POPs. But if you're familiar with, uh, so the protocol underneath is called Turn. So there's actually other vendors that offer Turn as a service, right? So you can actually buy, uh, you can buy that type of global granularity of Turn capabilities. People generally use it for WebRTC and UCAS type services. But in our case, we're actually standardized on the Turn protocol to be able to do that type of firewall traverse. So you could actually use a different service provider if for some reason you wanted to? Twilio offers one. There's a couple of other folks as well that offer Turn as a service. Yep. And VMware is, is VMware working with them? Um, we uh, we can work with them, but our intention is actually to host it within our own SaaS pops. Oh, SASE pops. Sorry, not SaaS fire. That's <laughs> Uh Now that said, uh, I do want to be clear that the encryption is end to end. So even though there might be a third party that's involved you know, in the turn service itself, all they're doing is stitching the traffic. They don't actually have access to the payload data in, in the clear. Does this also mean if I'm uh, running the SD-WAN client and it's going through one of your pops uh, through a secure service edge, does that mean I'm not getting like deep packet inspection uh, and full inspection on decrypted traffic if it's encrypted end to end? So it's encrypted end to end if you're choosing not to make use of services like CWS. 
right? So if you're using CWS and you're directed traffic out to the internet, then that traffic will actually terminate in what we're calling a cloud connector inside our SASE pops. Then it will become, at least the outer shell will be uh, decrypted and it will be sent into the SWIG for further inspection in that way. And, and this goes back to, I think, one of the first things we talked about when Scott was, was going through is like, these are all independent offers. You can mix and match however you like. So if you want, you know, remote access with SWIG capability, we have that. If you just want remote access and your use case is about bringing traffic to your on-prem environment or your IaaS environment, we have that as well. Uh, and what if I wanted to go, you, you mentioned at the top, you mentioned, you know, with the integrated model, I could go to a third party uh, mm -hmm. SSE. Can I do that as well? Yep. Uh, so the way that would work is there's multiple ways. I mean, this is all IP traffic <laughs> once it gets all unwrapped at the end of the day. So one way of doing that is to have the SD-WAN client uh, connect to a client connector on-prem, and then it just gets sent into the data center and it'll follow default route to however you have it configured, right? That doesn't really require any SD-WAN integration. If you could use VMware SD-WAN in that case, but an even cooler option is actually to have that integration come in, have that SD-WAN client land in our SASE pop and get switched into our SD-WAN environment. And from there, we have our cloud-to-cloud uh, -cloud integration, for example, with Zscaler and, and other SS, uh, SSC vendors. And that way, that, that traffic never actually touches the customer's on-prem environment at all. So I think I covered most of these items already. Um, a big one is that we're, uh, the tunnels themselves are dynamic. They're not turned on all the time. Uh, if you connect to a client connector, you know, they'll be sticky for a while. But if there's no traffic for a long time, we'll, we'll turn off those, those tunnels. Um, uh, we will do direct connections if we can. If we cannot do direct connections, then of course we'll go through a relay. But again, uh, both these cases, we're doing constant measurements and it may not be the best path, for example, BGP wise, but it will be the best path performance wise. So you, we may go through, for example, uh, you know, relay one versus relay two, if relay one is providing better performance for that specific connection between this specific source and this specific destination. Uh, a couple of other things, uh, we talked about performance-based uh, path selection. Uh, we're able to, uh, uh, you know, use UDP or TCP, whatever works best for that particular environment. And we're able to actually move traffic back and forth. Again, it's a tunnel. One of the one of the benefits of a tunnel is that you're actually able to move traffic back and forth between different tunnels as you find alternate paths for them to be able to use. Um, I, I, so we've been sort of focusing on the remote access use case, but there's some really cool things that the technology allows us to be able to do. For example, in this case, um, one of the modes that you can put the SD-WAN client in is a forcible security policy that's called hub and spoke. If you're familiar with, you know, in the old days in switching land, there used to be this thing called private VLAN, where you'd have these sort of individual uh, you know, server sitting, but you didn't want the servers to ever talk to each other, but you only wanted them to be able to talk to the uplink. So there is a mode you can put the SD-WAN client in where it's able to basically do this hub and spoke model where, you know, we install uh, the SD-WAN client on, you know, these ATM machines. The ATM machines never talk to each other, but they are able to talk to a few set of sort of common services uh, servers up in the cloud and of itself. So that's one of the cool things about sort of these inbuilt security policies, if, if you will. And that's the other thing is that it's not just for users. Uh, you have user accounts that are authenticated through SAML and the like, but you also can have machine accounts such as for an ATM. I'm going to say ATM machine. I know it's redundant, but uh, for an ATM. Um, and you're able to sort of bring them on board using a security token and, and have it be validated and revalidated over time and things of that nature. Right. Um, and this is to sort of bring back home the point that Scott talked about, which is Veeamer is committed to our partnerships and our relationships. This is something that's actually uh, part of the culture of VMware uh, coming in from our ability to host all these different sort of environments. Uh, we work very closely with uh, a number of security vendors, with a number of multi-cloud uh, environments, whether they be on the IaaS side or on the connectivity side. Um, uh, UCAS environments, and of course, uh, you know, on, on the service provider side as well. So going back to the ATM example, yep. um, I, I'm just curious. So you said put the the agent right on the ATM. Mm -hmm. What's what's the overhead of the agent then? I assume it's kind of small. It's very small. Um, and also a lot of times like these ATMs are actually running Windows. So it, it's not like it's anything super like complicated in that way. It's not some embedded OS or anything like that. A lot of times it's Windows. Uh, uh, it's a it's a very small overhead, but also I think the keep the other thing to keep in mind is ATM transactions. They're not sending a whole lot of like video traffic. Yes, they do send like snapshots of of pictures and stuff like that, but you're not. It's not the radiologist use case. 
So uh, the overhead component is not coming in from memory. It could potentially be coming from CPU because if you're trying to push a lot of traffic through it, it will actually, you know, the encryption overlay and those types of things will, will start consuming CPU. But that's not the case over here. And what's the uh, the management of the clients? Same. Um, it, this would actually be through that cloud-based multi-tenant system. Uh, it's actually the same one that we use for managing SD WAN today. So single single pane of glass. Oh yeah, single, <laughs> this is single vendor SASE, if you will. And, and I think, like you know, uh, one of the items over there is it's not just about having, you know, everything in a single sort of screen. I mean, that that's one thing. Uh, and from a UX perspective, yes, it's painful to like you know twist your neck or you know do the alt tab thing. But I think the greater sort of benefit, which is that sort of single pane of glass phase two or like 2.0, which is like hey, the semantics of everything that that meaning, what's what is a site, what is a policy, is actually integrated across the different services that are resident inside that same management pane. So that's the real sort of power. That a lot of times gets lost in like, hey, yes, a single management plane, but these are all like completely separate panes, if you will. <laughs> you just sit, they happen to be sitting inside the same window. That's actually what the, those are the types of things that you're actually seeing in VM or SASE is that the level of I would say semantic integration between the meanings of different objects, and we're also bringing that into the SD WAN client as well. Could you help me understand how SD WAN client is different from VM or Secure Access? Yeah, absolutely. So VM or Secure Access is. Um, uh, it's more on, so eventually the plan is actually to merge these together into a single uh, client, right? So that's the end state. We're not there today. Uh, if you, and, and I think the best way to sort of compare them is like, what is the customer looking for? If they're looking for something that is more down the line of zero trust capabilities, they're looking for integration with Workspace ONE in terms of device management, those types of things. Uh, if they're looking for something that is uh, integrated in with their device management software because it's an end client team, then secure access is that product today, right? Now in the future, it'll be one single product, but that is what the product is today. Uh, if you're looking for something that has uh, high alignment with SD-WAN technology, this network optimization types of things, uh, you've got a mix of machines and non and non machines, meaning people, <laughs> that's your sort of end systems, uh, then that is what the SD-WAN client is, is targeted for today. Now it will be taking on capabilities from the secure access cap uh, set, for example, zero trust and those types of things. And, and that's when we'll see a convergence between the two clients. Just to follow up on the, the single pane of glass question, um, you know, talking about the three different sort of options, the hardware appliance, the um, secure access client, and now this new SD-WAN client, assuming those are all differentiated in that platform and you can tell which client is using which platform and there's, yep. there's easy ways to manage those. Yep, yep. So you can even have policies in both the, uh, secure access client as well as the SD-WAN client, they're uh, OS specific, right? Uh, you could say like, hey, I only allow, generally you don't do this, but you may be aware like, hey, my employee base is you know, 100% like Windows. So there shouldn't be anybody else coming in through any of the things. So you can actually create OS restrictions in that way as well. What I see more commonly though, is like you, you're looking for a particular EDR to be installed or, or working in those types of things. And we can do that as well. And then there's been a lot of talk in here about, you know, on-prem data centers, but what about industrial environments with uh, different protocols like BACnet, Modbus, things like that that might be traversing uh, these connections? So um, we don't have a, we, we don't support like uh, RS-485 or any of those sort of, uh, I would say, arcane protocol, <laughs> protocols on, on our hardware, but there is Modbus TCP. And with the client connector, you can stick that traffic into uh, into our client connector, and, and it has reachability in that in that particular way. And, and that's exactly you know to that same conversation we had a while back about you know having that appliance, it allows you access into a whole host of sort of devices that you're not able to install an agent on, right? So with SD WAN um, client, we have the agent option, but through the client connector, you can reach IoT devices as well. 